Hello everybody, I'm the Bear Bro Brobby. Uh, today we're back in the workshop again because it's pouring down with rain outside, but hey, we can't do anything about that. Today we're going to talk about centre shot. In previous videos, which I'll put a link to up there on the screen, we've already set our string in line with our limbs so we know that the string will go perfectly squarely down the centre of the bow. What we need to do now is align our arrow so that it goes perfectly straight in line with us and the target, not deviate left, not deviate right, you want it perfectly square. And we do this with the aid of our plunger button. That's what a plunger button looks like. Now, this type of bow is designed to be shot with a plunger button. There's a threaded bolt hole right there where your plunger button goes. Now you can shoot one of these without a plunger button if you really wanted to. You could use something like an Eastern Super Rest to shoot with it but the trouble is you won't get the consistency with one of those than you will with one of these i'm going to do a video in the future about the different types of arrow rests and the pros and cons of each one but that's going to be for another day before we get completely into into doing our center shot let's talk about pressure buttons or plunger buttons as they're sometimes called um, and how they work so you can understand what it does during your shot process. What happens is, pressure buttons come in various different price ranges. You've got something like this, which is about five or six quid. That's at the bottom end of the market, or something more like this, which is more high end. They go up to, they go up to nearly 200 pounds, would you believe? But they basically both do the same job. The difference in the price is basically built based on the quality, the materials and the precision and the adjustability of them. This has a basic just adjustability to it. This one is a little more precise. A pressure button basically consists of three moving parts. You've got the plunger button with its spring behind. You've got the tension adjustment, which adjusts the, obviously the tension of the spring inside it and then you've got the locking collar. The locking collar is adjustable in and out and that can adjust the distance through your bow that the plunger actually goes. The plunger at the end with the spring behind it works like a small shock absorber. What happens when you release your arrow, the arrow flexes and without this shock absorber here the, the arrow shaft can hit your riser and deflect the arrow offline. Now, if you're a very, very high-end archer, and I don't know too many of those, you can use the tension in your plunger button by turning this to adjust the flight of your arrow very slightly, not very much, only a small amount. But if you don't group arrows consistently, no amount of messing about with the spring tension on there is going to make your arrows group better. You need to practice more. That's the real answer to that. But if you're very, very good, you can use that to your advantage. And this is where the really high end ones come in because they're so fine tunable. Is that a word? For so fine tunable that they can use this to their advantage and get very, very tight groups. Back to center shot. What I want you to do is set your spring tension about midway by wind the spring tension all the way in so the plunger no longer moves it's as solid as it can be and then wind it back about halfway through its tension we've done a very similar thing with the limb bolt so you should, that should be a fine thing to do and it doesn't really matter what you set the tension at at this stage it's irrelevant to it because all we're doing is setting up the center shot we'll fine tune your plunger button at a later date okay as you can see I've set my bow up so the string is running straight through the center of that top limb bolt so we know the string's in line and we're looking straight down the arrow. The first thing I want you to do is take your plunger button and loosen the grub knot that holds the locking collar in place and wind it all the way down to the main body as far as it will go. Then screw it into the side of your riser and what you'll do is as you screw it in it will push the arrow to the left if you're a right-handed archer to the right if you're a left-handed one and if you look closely on the end of my arrow i'll put a small pointer on that's so you can see it more clearly as the arrow starts to move start to wind your pressure button in and you'll see that that 
little pointer will start to appear from behind the string. Let's keep winding. You see it yet? There it is, just there. And let's just wind it back a bit. You want that pointer to just be touching the outside edge of your string. Let's just wind it back a little bit. That looks just about perfect to me. Maybe a touch more. Just there. Perfect. Now, when you've got that set, hold the main body of your plunger button still and tighten up the collar to the side of your riser, being careful not to move the main body. There we go. Once that's tightened onto the side, take the whole thing out, and then all you have to do is, hang on a second, all you have to do is tighten up the grub knot, in this case this one's got two, so that that collar doesn't move anymore. So now every time you go to shoot, if you just screw your plunger button back into your bow, then your plunger depth and therefore your centre shot is in the same place every time. It is as simple as that. So there you are, that's centre shot. Nice straightforward five minute job, but vitally important if you want to shoot well. If you haven't already done your limb alignment, I'll, set, I'll put a link just up there so you can watch that one if you want to. If you like the videos, please click the like button down there. If you wish to subscribe to the channel to see some more videos just like this one, click down there somewhere. Thank you. I've been the Bearbow Brummy. Goodbye.